high. In this video, we are going to practice stoichiometry volume volume exercises. Like the following example How many milliliters of H3PO4 are going to be produced by the reaction of 30 milliliters POCl3 with excess water? And as I explained in the previous videos, we cannot start solving before we balance the chemical equation. Welcome to Schooler, your online school. You may check your understanding by solving the end of video questions. And good luck. To balance this chemical reaction, we should multiply HCl by 3, then water by 3. And now the equation is balanced, so we can start solving. In this exercise, the given amount is 30 milliliter of POCl3, which we are going to call from now on the known. And the amount required to be calculated is the milliliters of H3PO4, or which we are going to call it from now on the unknown. So since we started with a volume and the amount that we want to calculate is also a volume, this is called stoichiometry volume volume exercise. And as I explained in the previous videos, that I can relate the known with the unknown quantities only by using the more ratio, which can be taken from the balanced chemical equation by putting the modes of the known quantity in the denominators, which is here, modes of POCl3, and the moles of the unknown quantity, which is here H3PO4 in the numerator. And then the coefficients, we pick them from the balanced chemical equation, one next to POCl3 and one next to H3PO4. And since we cannot convert volume to moles directly, we are going to use the following procedure to solve all stoichiometry volume volume problems. We are going to start by converting volume of the known quantity to mass of the known quantity by using the density. Then we convert the mass of the known quantity to the moles of the known quantity by using the periodic table. Then we convert the moles of the known quantity to the moles of the unknown quantity by using the mole ratio. Convert the moles of the unknown quantity to the mass of the unknown quantity by also using the periodic table. And finally, we convert the mass of the unknown quantity to the volume of the unknown quantity using the density. So to summarize the steps that we're going to follow while we are solving stoichiometry volume volume problems, we have five convergence. We're going to convert the volume to mass, mass to moles, moles to moles, moles to mass, and mass to volume. The first part about the known quantity, while the second part about the unknown quantity. So always in volume volume exercises, we are going to use five convergent factors unless we need to convert the volume as we are going to see in the next exercise. And always to convert volume to mass, we use the density, mass to moles, we use the periodic table, and moles to moles, we use the mole ratio. We start with the given, which is 30 milliliters of POCl3. We want to convert it to mass by multiplying it with a fraction using the density. Since the unit of the given is milliliters of POCl3, so we put milliliters of POCl3 in the denominator and we put grams in the numerator. And this relation between milliliters and grams, we get it from the density, which is supposed to be given. The density of POCl3 is 1.67 grams. So we put 1.67 next to the grams and one next to the milliliters. The next step is to convert the mass to moles. Since we have grams of POCl3 in the numerator, we put it in the next fraction in the denominator and moles of POCl3 in the numerator. Next to moles we put 1 and next to grams we get the molar mass of POCl3 from the periodic table. The molar mass of phosphorus to the nearest tenth is 31 while the molar mass of oxygen to the nearest tenth is 16 and the molar mass of chlorine to the nearest tenth is 35.5. So the total mass of POCl3 is going to be 153.5. So we put 153.5 next to grams of POCl3 and then we multiply with another fraction to convert moles of POCl3 to moles of H3PO4. Since we have moles of POCl3 in the numerator and the next fraction is going to be in the denominator and moles of H3PO4 in the numerator. We get the coefficients from the balanced chemical equation 
1 next to POCl3 and 1 next to H3PO4. Then we multiply one another fraction to convert moles of H3PO4 to mass of H3PO4. Since moles of H3PO4 in the numerator, the next fraction is going to be in the denominator. We put 1 next to moles of H3PO4 and next to grams of H3PO4 we get the molar mass from the periodic table. The molar mass of hydrogen to the nearest tenth is 1, the molar mass of phosphorus to the nearest tenth is 31, while the molar mass of oxygen to the nearest tenth is 16. So the total mass of H3PO4 is going to be 98. So we put 98 next to grams of H3PO4, we multiply one another fraction. Since the grams of H3PO4 in the numerator, and the next fraction is going to be in the denominator, and you put milliliters of H3PO4 in the numerator, we get the numbers from the density. We put next to grams 1.83, and next to milliliters we put 1. Usually densities are supposed to be given in volume-volume psychometric exercises. We cancel similar units between numerators and denominators. Then we multiply all numerators together, we divide them by the denominators, and the answer is going to be 17.48 milliliters of H3PO4. Stay tuned for another important exercise. Another exercise, how many liters of isoctane are needed to react with 100 milliliters of oxygen? Before we start solving, as you know, we should balance the chemical reaction. To balance, we multiply octane by 2, then carbon dioxide by 16, water by 18, and oxygen by 25. Keep in mind that in the description box, you may find many useful links. Since here the given or the known quantity is in volume, and the unknown quantity is also in volume, this is a stoichiometry volume volume exercise. And in such cases, the procedure is going to be as follows. We convert volume to mass, mass to moles, moles to moles, moles to mass, and mass to volume. So we start with the given, which is 100 milliliters of oxygen, and then we multiply it with a fraction, and now I want to all to listen carefully. Since the density of oxygen is 1.33 grams per liter, so it's a relation between grams and liter, and we cannot convert milliliters to grams of oxygen, because we don't have a relation between milliliters of oxygen and grams of oxygen. So we have to start by converting milliliters of oxygen to liters of oxygen first, then we convert liters of oxygen to grams of oxygen. And to do this, usually we use a conversion factor. And since one liter is equal to 1000 milliliters, we put one next to liters and 1000 next to milliliters of oxygen. In the next fraction, we put liters of oxygen in the denominator and the grams of oxygen in the numerator. We get the numbers from the density of oxygen, 1.33 next to grams and 1 next to liters. Then we multiply with another fraction to convert grams of oxygen to moles of oxygen. We put grams of oxygen in the denominator and moles of oxygen in the numerator. We put 1 next to the moles of oxygen and we get the molar mass of oxygen from the periodic table. As you can see, the molar mass of oxygen in the periodic table to the nearest tenth is 16, so the molar mass of oxygen gas is going to be 32. So we write 32 next to grams of oxygen, then we multiply with another fraction to convert moles of oxygen to moles of isooctane. We put moles of oxygen in the denominator and moles of isooctane in the numerator. We get the coefficients from the balanced chemical equation, 25 next to moles of oxygen and 2 next to moles of isooctane. Then we multiply with another fraction to convert moles of isooctane to grams of isooctane. We put moles of isooctane in the denominator and grams of isooctane in the numerator. We put 1 next to moles and we get the molar mass of isooctane from the periodic table and then we place it next to grams of isoctane. The molar mass of carbon in the periodic table to the nearest tenth is 12, while the molar mass of hydrogen in the periodic table to the nearest tenth is 1, so the molar mass of isoctane is going to be 114. So we write 114 next to grams of isoctane, we multiply with another fraction to convert grams of isoctane to volume of isoctane, since the density 
of isoctane it's a relation between grams and milliliter so we can convert grams to milliliters of isoctane but the question is asking about liters of isoctane so we're going to write one more step to convert milliliters of isoctane to liters of isoctane we put one next to milliliters and next to grams we put 0 0.692 then we multiply with one more fraction to convert milliliters of isoctane to liters of isoctane since milliliters of isoctane is in the numerator so we put it in the next fraction in the denominator and liters of isoctane in the numerator one liter is equal to 1000 milliliter then we cross all the similar units between numerators and denominators we multiply all numerators together then we divide them with the denominators and the final answer is going to be 5.5 .5 times 10 to the power minus 5 liters of isoctane and now you are ready to solve the end of video questions please if you are not repeat the video again otherwise solve the questions put your answer in the comment section if you have any question that i didn't cover in the video please share it with me in the comment section share this video with your friends subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for more videos see you in other videos and good luck